We are now going to be starting act two of the Sumeru Archon Quest, baby. YouTube, welcome in. We didn't miss the sub -Zero's festival, right? No, we What's didn't. Really find Dunyar's on? Paimon thinks she must be around the Grand Bazaar since she showed us around there last time. Okay, well, let's go see. I'm very excited for, for act two, though. Act one was phenomenal. A lot of people were saying act two felt too long. Let's be honest with each other here, right? If they didn't do a good job of introducing the characters, the rest of the acts would likely be shit. Look at Inazuma when people said that act one was too long and the rest was rushed. Like, you need to do a good job in every aspect for the whole Archon quest to feel good. And I feel like they did great world building already in one act of Sumeru, which is phenomenal. I'm very excited to see act two. Let's have a look. Let's get in here. We're back. Hello. Just as promised, Traveler and Paimon. I'm so glad that you two came back to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. At least like we made it back in time. It's a very important festival, after all. Indeed. The festival's tomorrow. We've been preparing for so long that I can't help but feel a little nervous. There's no need to be nervous. I'm unsure that Lesser Lord Kusanali will feel everyone's gratitude. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Paimon. I hope that everyone who comes to the festival will also have a good time. I'm kind of realizing now, but this necklace looks like it's etched onto her skin on the front and back. It doesn't look like a jewelry piece. Speaking of which, um, did you manage to make your way to Port Ormos? Discover anything over there? Of course we went. A lot of things happened there. Unfortunately, we didn't find any new information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. Instead, we were only we only left with more questions. <sighs> I see. Sounds like you two had another exciting adventure. Kinda. If there is another chance, I would love to join. What? My lady, if you went to Port Ormos in your current state, we'd both be in for a lifetime of trouble. Oh, hell yeah, Dea. Oh, look at her, dude. Dea, you were eavesdropping. Hey, she can eavesdrop all she wants, Paimon. It's called covert protection. Keeping an ear out for what's going on around my employer is part of the job. <laughs> it's yeah. all right, Dea. I merely said I would like to go. I know better than to think my body could handle it. The festival's Aww. tomorrow. I've been doing nothing but causing trouble for you. So, Dia, please take some time to relax. I'll be fine. Oh. Um, even when you put it that way, it still doesn't feel right. You're so protective. It's adorable. Don't worry, my guardian <clears throat> knight. Oh. Okay, fine, but only tonight. Tomorrow's a big day, and many no-good scumbags are going to try to take advantage of that. Fair. <sighs> Are you tired, Paimon? Oh, it has been a long day. You must be exhausted from your long journey back to the city. Uh, my apologies for not realizing this sooner. It's I've fine. I prepared a room for you to rest. Please follow me. Okay. Whoa, you're so thoughtful. Paimon's so ready. <laughs> Is Daya here? Ooh, the morn of a thousand the morn a thousand roses brings, and so it begins. Oh, Jesus Christ! And so it fucking begins. <laughs> I'm so ready for this shit, dude. I am so fucking ready. Am I in Dea's room? Here we are. It's also fairly close to where I've been staying. It looks really nice. Woof woof. Oh. Sorry for the trouble, Dunyazod. <laughs> Not at all. It, just tell me more about your adventures when you next get the chance. I'm down. That's Paimon's specialty. Paimon can tell you stories next time. Uh, about our plans for tomorrow. Oh, if you don't mind, how about we all walk around together tomorrow? Okay. All of my friends will be working the festival, and Dia is still insisting on her covert protection. Yeah. It'll be pretty hard to relax and enjoy the festival if Dia's constantly hovering over you, right? I'll keep you company tomorrow. Uh, it'll be easier to get information with your help. Then let's meet at the nearby bazaar first thing tomorrow morning. Have a great night. It's a deal. Good night, Dunyarzad. Sleep well. I may be too excited to fall asleep tonight. See you tomorrow. Oh, God. Am I going to pass out from tiredness and go back into fucking dreamscape like in the Act 1, dude? I'm Please no. I'm starting to really look forward to the sub -Zero Festival, too. Will there be lots of yummy food? God, I hope oh, so. I don't know. Thinking about food is just going to keep time on up all night. The earlier we sleep, the better. Let's go inside, traveler. Okay. If I do dream, can I dream about the big tree again? Ah, did we oversleep? We didn't even dream? Oh, wait, we don't dream in Sumer. We should go meet Dunyarzad right away. Okay. 
Uh, the coming of the Subzeros Festival. Go to the appointed place and talk to Dunya Zod. Alright, let's do this. I'm so fucking ready. What do you mean he's not ready? I'm always ready, dude. <clears throat> I am born ready. You don't understand. I am born ready. Traveler, Paimon, I've been waiting for you two. Hello. Good morning, Dunyarzad. We must have overslept a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I arrived early. Oh. <sighs> Today is finally here. I must cherish every moment as if it were gold. You've worked so hard for this day. You gotta enjoy it to the fullest. Bro, imagine she was gold. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Oh, it's just that, um, as expected, I had some trouble falling asleep last night. Hmm. I'm hoping my body won't be too much of an issue today. Well, shall we? What? I did. I. Bro! Okay. Many vendors came Ooh. out of the blue to support the event, and they insisted on covering costs themselves. I'm walking, dude. Give them some business. They paid for everything out of pocket? I didn't mean to. Oh, oh. It sounds like they're not in this just for the Mora. They all said that contributing to a lively festival atmosphere is more important than money. Especially since we don't often get to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanawi's birthday. Where are you going? Buying fruit? Ooh, they're selling food over that way! Let's go take a look! Damn, that looks like good fruit, dude. Is that a big pomegranate? Oh. This is a stall offering foods from the Haftmewa feast. God, it looks so good. Oh, you could tell straight away. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. Mushrooms, flowers, and all kind of fruit? It's all vegetarian stuff. Maybe well, my theory is correct. A little disappointed. Most people nowadays. Hmm. Think, think, think. Maybe she is the, the greater lord. So, what's the Hoft Mewa feast you mentioned just now? It's another Subzerus festival tradition. People used to set their tables with seven different foods. Seven. Generally speaking, the most common selections were foods like Rukushafa mushrooms, lunar lotuses, Sumera roses, sunsetias, kapulatas, hara fruits, and zaytun peaches. So, the Subzero Festival is a vegetarian holiday? <laughs> you don't have to be a vegetarian to enjoy the spread. True. We just use the seven foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. Wait! case if Samara uses vegetarian food to represent the dendro archon yeah then wouldn't the pyro archon's festival be full of food like roasted fowl juicy meatballs grilled steak oh traveler we have to go to netlon as soon as possible i agree <laughs> i hope your wish comes true one day paimon god i agree thanks all right how about we also check out some of these other stalls that's interesting. So the foods represent the seven virtues of the of the Dendro Archon. Dear customers, would you like to try Alchemy. your hand at alchemical divination? What's alchemical divination? Those two things sound like they'd be fun to try together. Right? I thought the same when I first heard about it. It is said to be a mysterious craft invented by none other than Lesser Lord Kusanali herself. Interesting. So, how does it work? It's quite simple. After Got this you music. Give me any two alchemical reagents, I'll use them to perform a random transmutation. Sure sounds random. So random that it will probably fail. True. That is precisely what we need. After the transmutation fails, your one and only diviner here will interpret the remnants. For some reason, I don't buy it. This entire thing's way too random. Well, according to Lesser Lord Kusanali, everything is interconnected. And all that occurs can be traced back to fate. You could say this is a pearl of old wisdom. Okay, dude. I wait. This is weird how she keeps saying like old wisdom and knowing old things and things like that. I, I have a feeling she is Greater Lord Ruka Devata, or maybe even Kusanali, but I doubt it because she told us the whole story. Why does this is weird. Sound so much more credible when Dunya is exactly. It? Are you guys working together? So that's the true wisdom behind it. This young lady sure knows her stuff. So, how about it? Want to give it a try? I guess I can give it a go. Any two, eh? Uh, okay, I'll give you Sakura Bloom, and I'll give you Adorika Budo. Okay, one moment. Hmm. It's the moon. 
Fuck, dude. Paimon, we can't buy the moon here, okay? And also, Ito's moony in the camera. God damn it. Paimon wants to take a look, too. Uh, is it? It looks more like a pie that Paimon bit into. Hmm. Generally speaking, the moon signifies... It means... Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Look at your handbook. It's all good. Really looking it up in a book? <laughs> it's fine. There's probably a lot of different oh, symbols. I remember now. It means illusions and lies. Illusions and lies? That sounds rather ominous. Are you... You're wearing an yes, illusion and lying to us. this book says that if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. Oh. He's not even trying to hide his book anymore. I don't like this. Naturally, fate will only ever show you the beginning of a journey. It is up to you to forge your own ending. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. I'll keep that in mind. She is way too wise to be just this random NPC that we meet, dude. I'm calling it now. Oh, it's <clears> nothing. <throat> I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. Yes, that was still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. Okay, I'm down. Jesus Christ. They I say the sub Zeros festival was very lively a long, long time ago. Large flower carriages used to parade through the city. As they headed towards Port Ormos, people would throw flowers, candy, and liquor all along the way. The throw liquor? Tarazad's eyes are sparkling right now. Oh, I wish I could have seen that spectacle. But if you ask me, I'm sure Nilu's dance of Subzeros will be just as impressive. Hmm. Monka, dude. I don't know. Forest. Attention! Yeah? Soldiers, fall into formation if you want any Yalda candies. I love candy. <laughs> That's so cute, dude. Why is he scared? It's a weird guy with a weird hat. What the fuck? Hey, it's two years on. Miss Dunyarzad, the children love you even more than the Yalda candies. What is that all about? In the few short days it took to prepare for the Sabzeros festival, the children have all grown very fond of you. Aww. Uh, um, the hallowed night of flowers. It's an honor that you know my name. Oh god, dude. The weird shit's happening again. You see how she's glowing? Literally glowing? But it happens to, like, all NPCs just when there's stairs in the background and stuff. It's so weird. God. I thought she was, like, glowing because she was actually glowing then. <coughs> Attention! In the name of Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, I commend you on your contributions to the glorious Sabzerus Festival. All right, little soldiers, take your Yalda candies and don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed. Dismissed. Yes, Knight Ferris! <laughs> uh, just what is going on here? <laughs> Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another Sabzerus Festival icon and one immensely popular with children. In the past, the actor portraying Ferris would also sit on a flower carriage. Oh, that's cute. It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can make such wonderful memories today. As are we to you, Vihar. Oh, <laughs> not at all. Oh, speaking of tradition, do you want mm. some Yalta candies? They're a festival staple, and I happen to have some boxes readied here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Whichever one? Ooh. <laughs> Use elemental sight. <laughs> that is the fun part. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Oh. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Ooh, those all sound pretty good. Lavender melon. And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. What? You think huh? oni kabuto? What those two flavors. <clears throat> oni kabuto is a little spicier than lizard tail. Tanyarzad, you tried them before? Traveler, help Paimon pick one. Paimon wants the Sunsetia flavor. Uh, don't blame me if I choose the wrong it's one. Right. I also believe in your intuition. I skipped it by accident. Oh, God, okay. Right. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? I want number three. Because I think he said Sunsetia's third. I'm going for it. Attention! That's unfortunately Lavender Melon. That's what I'd have chose. Oh, Paimon thought you survived so many epic battles because you had incredible luck. But looks like Paimon was wrong. 
Pokemon, get fuck. What are you talking about? Fuck off. The Sunsetia flavored candy was in box Sorry. number four. How about this? The most important thing is that everyone has a good time at the festival. So please, take both boxes. Oh, let's go, dude. Free it's food. Night of candies. I picked the best option. It's night of flowers, not night of candies. <laughs> Paimon really wilted the carriageless night of flowers. <laughs> they all basically sound the same. We got our candy, so let's keep going. Oh, okay. Well, actually, I just remembered that I left something behind. Um, since you're here, sus. Can you come with me to get it? Sure thing. Didn't you, Zad? You probably forgot because you're so excited about the Sub Zero's festival. Bullshit, dude. Ah, <laughs> uh, how embarrassing. There's something really saucy about her. Either she is Kusanali or she is um Ruka Devata, I'm calling it. Maybe she's none and I'm just dumb, but we're too late. Who knew the little lady was such an early riser? I know, right? Hey, wait a minute. Boss, isn't that her? Little lady? Oh, that most certainly is. We're in luck. She's walking right into our clutches. Time to fight. Oh, Zero Mites don't look like they're up to any good. Who are you? I don't believe the Homayamis hired you. <laughs> That's right. We haven't received any of their mora, but I wonder how much the Homayanis would shell out to get you back. They're a gang of kidnappers! Traveler, hurry and protect Junior Zod! Professionally, I'm ready to go. Hey, did you scumbags even consider that the Homayanis might have hired a merc that outclasses you? Oh, fuck. Dia! Dia the Flame Mane! No wonder we mercs haven't heard anything about you for so long. You sold your unruly mane to the highest bidder. <laughs> Don't speak so disrespectfully. My family started working with her as gratitude for her past kindness to us. Don't worry about it, my lady. Oh Just my god. Some friendly banter between mercs. One punch and those rabid dogs will expose themselves for what they really are. <laughs> Aren't your claws all dull by now? Don't get too cocky. What the fuck? What, you think adding two, three extra people is gonna do anything, motherfucker? Traveler, take Miss Junior Zad to a safe location. I'll fuck him up, no, Dea. We're gonna stay and help. There's too many of them. Uh, Dea's top priority is her employer's safety. Mm, you're right. All right, fine. Please be careful, Dea. Don't waste your time worrying about me. This is my job. Look out for yourself. After I've wiped the floor with them, I'll go find you all. Jesus, she's so cool, dude. That sentence is... is... Motherfucker, what? Es uh, I just got to escape? What? What? Hey, Day, you know I, I, I'm a mop? You can wipe the floor with me as well. <laughs> oh, are you good? Dunyarzad, are you okay? You look a little pale. Are you in shock? I, uh, I'm fine. My body always reacts like this whenever I exert myself too much. Okay, so theory time. Obviously, uh, the, the Greater Lord Ruka Devata is missing. Uh, world forget me. She could be impersonating somebody else to um, blend in amongst the crowds. It still could be her. But also, Lesser Lord Kusanali is also, I think, saying um, that she wasn't strong enough yet. Maybe she's still growing in strength. I don't know, dude. I'm just thinking. You sure you're okay? Theorizing. Theorizing yeah. hard. I'll be fine after some rest. I'm more worried about Dia. After all, none of this would have happened if I hadn't insisted on coming out today. Don't worry, she's tough. She's protecting you because she agrees with you. Yeah, don't worry. Oh god, what is... Oh, little transition here. <laughs> I was like, go to fucking bed. My lady, traveler, found ya. Oh wow, you yeah, really did wipe the floor with them. took care of them so fast. Any more of them? Or rather, did anyone follow you? No, I just checked. Dia, your arm. Oh, shit. Oh, this... I'm fine. It's just a scratch. Normally, they wouldn't have been able to land a hit on me at all, but I'm still getting used to this new greatsword. Oh, yes, the clay will wield it in. Please, let me take a closer look. Come on, it's nothing. Us mercs aren't as fragile as you think. Closer look to do what, hmm? Hold on, you said something about a new greatsword. Uh, what happened to the one you were using before? Uh, about that. 
Well, I oh, sold damn. it because I was low on Mora. Stuff like this happens every now and then. It can't be. The anonymous donation that was used for the venue's final round of preparations? <sighs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Hey, Miss Dunyar's ad. That's I so wasn't cute. trying to make you cry. And I'm not gonna lose my commission because I made my employer cry, am I? <laughs> okay, making your employer cry won't affect your commission, but selling your weapon without permission and getting hurt? I'll have to reevaluate your performance. <laughs> You're so unreasonable, my lady. <laughs> Thank you very much, dear. That's so cute! Don't be like that. I get embarrassed really easily. <coughs> you want a mask? Are you feeling unwell again, Dunyarzad? My lady, your condition. Traveler, can you take her somewhere to rest? I'll look around the area to make sure we're safe from an ambush. No problem. Leave it to me! <laughs> Truly. I'm sorry for the trouble, everyone. There's no trouble, Dunyazard, if that is your real name. <laughs> Fucking sus, dude. I don't trust anybody in this game anymore, dude. I, I really don't. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, you are really weak. Dude, she might be Kusanali. Are you feeling better, Dunyazard? <laughs> yes, much better. Just give me a few moments and... I'll be good to go. Day's expression just now, when she mentioned your condition. How serious is your illness? I didn't realize you were concerned about it. I guess I shouldn't continue to keep it a secret. I was actually born with Elazar. It's terminal now. Terminal? Can't believe it's Elazar! Oh, uh, you've already heard of Elazar. In that case, you probably know about its severity. Sumero's current medical advancements still haven't been able to find a cure. The disease's progression can only be delayed through environmental therapy. Oh. There's no need to be sad. I've always lived with Elazar and I came to terms with it a long time ago. Compared to the simple fact that I'm afflicted with this, its effects on my life have been much more painful. I know that my family loves me dearly. They've done all they can to provide the best environment for me, so that I can live for that much longer. <sighs> However, I know I will one day succumb to this. What? Did you know? Before I ran away from home this time, the world outside of my home didn't even know that I existed. Since I was a child, all I could do was sit on my bed and stare at everything outside of my window. I'm oh, sure my man. family's worried and disappointed in me for running away, but I... I just didn't want to have any regrets. It's fair. I wanted to meet other people. To me, there's nothing more beautiful than being able to meet and speak with others. Not to mention the incredible time spent preparing for the festival. The joy on everyone's faces here. And all the support I've received from friends like Dia. Oh, this is too this cute. Way, when my final day does arrive. It'll be less sorrowful. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. At the dude. very least, <clears throat> many people will remember that I once existed in this world. Right? God, where have I heard that line before? Oh, I think I've heard that from Final Fantasy. Re remember that I once existed or something? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, I will remember you. Don't say that. You s you still have happy times yet to come. Uh, as long as you don't forget Paimon, Paimon also won't forget about you. Oh. No, even if you forget Paimon, Paimon will still remember you. <laughs> oh, thank you two so much. I apologize for the depressing conversation. This is this is out of character for me. God to damn. be honest, Lesser Lord Kusanali gave me the courage to do all of this. If it weren't for her encouragement, I wouldn't have taken that first step. The scales, dude. Oh, you're the one who's remained resolute in the face of your illness. You're already so strong for never giving up. Thanks. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. That's a wonderful mindset. Oh, right. Isn't it almost time? Huh? Almost time for what? Isn't the dance of Sub-Zero about to begin? 
It's the part of the festival that I've been looking forward to the most. Nilu will recreate that legendary scene with her most splendid dancing. And the Subzeros Festival will conclude amid everyone's applause and blessings. And with that, my wish will also... Ah? Uh? Then what are we waiting for? Let's go to the stage! Yeah, we should still make it in time. Paimon, if you just interrupted that, I'm gonna fucking throw you back into the ocean. Okay, here we go. Nilu! Were you not aware that the law prohibits this type of performance from taking place without prior permission? Oh, God. Over there! Someone's yelling at Nilu! I think I just saw the Academia's Grand Sage. That is the Grand Sage! Why is he here in person? But the dance of sub is one of the key parts of the sub Festival. If we can't perform it... The sub Festival... The law also prohibits the private hosting of large-scale religious festivals. Only the Academia can host such an event. Oh, fuck off. If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? Aww. The Academia was originally responsible for the sub Festival. But they failed this responsibility for many years. I need to speak with them. Don't go. They have the final say in all this. If we force the hand too much, the situation may get ugly. This is a hard pill to swallow, but you're right. Things would only get worse. Art. Dance. Aren't you ashamed of pursuing such frivolous and meaningless activities in this land of knowledge and reason? Yeah, use that knowledge and find a reason why I shouldn't punch you in the fucking monocle right now, prick. Our Archon created the utopia that is Sumeru City for all scholars who sought validity, verity, and truth, while people like you wish to defile it. No. I believe that our Archon never rejected the arts. Oh, God. Even the Goddess of Flowers dedicated a dance to her. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. Spit in his fucking face, Nilu. Do it. I, I won't look at you differently. What the? What a fucking asshole, did? When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. Uh. We will announce it to the public later via the Akasha. Oh my god, you're so cringe. Understood. I will inform him when I return. So fucking cringe. The sub Festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Oh, that was in the line. That was in the trailer, too. That's why they cut it off there. Hmm. Nilu, are you okay? Oh, Dunyarzad. You all saw that just now? Yeah. The Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. Yeah. Let's go somewhere the Academia can't find us and perform there. Uh, but how do we let everyone know? And what about the atmosphere on the stage? Do it anyway. Or we could get people to block them off so they can't interrupt the performance. Ah, uh, no. Aww. They just threatened to investigate the organizers. I thought she was gonna. We were caught. Nilu, it's all right. Don't worry about it. But you've been looking forward to the dance of sub so much. And I know how important this festival is to you. I don't want you to have any regrets. Oh. It's okay. Seeing you care this much about my feelings is more than enough. It would be too risky to continue the sub festival at this point. I don't want to get everyone in trouble. If you say so. Man. But you can sneak out for the next sub festival, right? We'll make sure the next one is a smashing success. No, give us the festival. <laughs> the next one. Oh, she don't... Yes. Okay. It's a promise. It will be a smashing success. Damn, does she not think she's going to make it to the next one? Oh, God. I'm nervous, dude. I can't believe this is how things turned out. Those heartless geezers. Should we try to think of another way? It really is okay. There's nothing we can do about it. <sighs> Still, I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilu's dance. Oh, man. Fuck. The sub Festival was forced to come to an unfortunately abrupt end. <sighs> a lot happened today. It's a shame the festival ended the way it did. Nilu and Dunyarzad promised to make the next sub 
Rose Festival a success. But Dunyarzad is running out of time. I'm sure she knows that very well. This may be a regret that can never be resolved. Yeah. <sighs> what the fuck was that noise? Hello, beep? All connections have been secured to construct the most stable framework possible. The project has entered its most critical phase. Power has begun to flow from... Oh my god, are they waking up the big robot? Are we just not going to talk about what the fuck we just heard in our beep beep shit? Ah. <laughs> what? Fuck it. Okay, I guess. I think it was the Akasha Terminal. Power has begun to flow from, I'm going to guess, either the er Ermensal tree or uh, the, the to the robot. The big, the big fucking, uh, the big, uh, this thing. <laughs> it's on the map. Look at that. Look how big that is. Holy shit. Dunyazard. Not at all. I arrived early. Again. Uh, you seem kind of tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Shall we go? Let's start with the stars. <laughs> of the yeah, I, I'm the fucking scene, Ethan. Uh, I feel it. I feel it, dude. Trust me. Sure. Uh, Trevor, why are you just standing there? Let's get going. Wait, are we doing the same fucking thing? Wait. Ooh, they're selling food over that way. Let's go take a look. I'm dreaming. It's still the dream. Number four. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Fuck. This is a stall offering foods from the Huffed Maywa feast. You are quite well informed, miss. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. Disappointed. Actually, what is the Hoft Mewa uh, feast you mentioned just now? Oh, it's one of the Subzerus festival's traditions. People used to set their tables with seven different foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. Wait, starting from just now, something feels really familiar. Really, you just noticed? <laughs> appear to be in the form of the moon. I think it's a dream. Like some kind of food or a vision. Hmm. The moon signifies. Hmm. It's escaping me for now. Wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Tell him what the oh, moon signifies. Right. Mm. It means illusions and lies. <gasps> but if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. Is all of this just illusions and lies? No. I feel like we've heard this before. Is this deja vu? Understood. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> uh. Guess that was still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. Four. <laughs> Four. So, where to next? The, the, this one. Captain, Captain Foodman. I'm going to pick three again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, soldiers, now that you have your Yalda candies, don't forget your loyalty what? to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Oh. Dismissed. Yes, yes Knight Ferris! Yes, Knight Ferris! What's going on? Is this a play? Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another sub festival icon and one immensely popular with children. <laughs> it's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can meet the Knight of Flowers. Oh, do you hmm. want some Yalta candies? I happen to have some boxes ready here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Okay. Uh, what's to pick? Don't these boxes all look the same? <laughs> it's not that simple. Yeah. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, tara fruit, sunsetia. I know. Ooh, how interesting. And there's also Lizard Tail and Oni Kabuto. Oh, wow. Ugh. Why? Why do those flavors even exist? Hmm. 
Traveler, help Paimon pick one. Paimon wants to eat the Sensetia flavor. Great. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? I bought the only Kabuto, did. I'm gonna go number one. <laughs> ah, excellently chosen. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. Wait, did, did I hit four? Wait, did I hit four? <laughs> Wait, did, I hit one. Hey, motherfucker, I want my fucking Oni Kabuto. <laughs> Paimon bet you had incredible luck, and Paimon was right. Did I really mean to choose number four? It felt like my body just subconsciously reached for it. Huh? Are you saying that you instinctively chose the right box? <laughs> no, I chose number one. <laughs> Now that you mention it, Paimon also had the feeling you'd choose the right one. Is that kind of like what you felt? Not in the slightest. Uh, what a strange feeling. Maybe we didn't sleep very well last night. Or maybe we slept too much. Or maybe we're still asleep. I'm sorry, don't you saw, but I need to leave for a moment. Oh, sure. Huh? Where are you going? You're just gonna walk off like that? The flavor of deja vu. Something ain't right. What's happening? Go. A feeling of deja vu? Yes. Oh, Paimon knows what that is. It's when you feel like you've already experienced whatever is going on. In that case, Paimon also felt something like that today. But that's just our brains playing tricks on us, isn't it? No. So Why'd you run here in such a hurry? I, it might be the Akasha Terminal. I wanted to do something I normally never would. I wanted to see if I could get rid of this deja vu. So that's it. You're intentionally doing things you usually wouldn't and seeing if you still get that same feeling of deja vu. Hmm. Welcome, you two. Are you here for lunch? What would you like to eat? <laughs> One coconut charcoal cake, please. Oh, no. Got it. You don't look like you're from these parts, but I gotta say, you got good taste. <laughs> I'll give this order oh, to the shit. kitchen. Thanks. You've already met Isn't us. It charcoal cake? Isn't it that that burned thing that didn't look tasty at all? Yes. Oh, Paimon understands what you're trying to do now. You'd never normally order something like this. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. That... thing? Are you really gonna eat it? Uh... Isn't this... going a bit too far? It looks so... good. Here goes! <laughs> Pick it up, Ethan. No one's feeding you! Uh, how was it? The look on your face is telling Paimon that it tasted awful. No, it actually tasted really good? Then... you mean... This flavor. I've definitely eaten this before. That's impossible. We were just talking about how gross it looked. So, would this be a case of taste for deja vu? I couldn't get rid of it after all. Looks like I tried this before. Paimon also gets the impression that we've been here many times, even though we are regulars. The Akasha Terminal is feeding us memories of other people without us... Asking for it. Um, how about we go out again and try something else? We're experiencing other people's memories. I don't fucking know, dude. Let's just go punch the Grand Sage. That's something we'd never do before. Bird. I like that bird. That one bird in particular. Hey, Dinnerzad is sitting by herself on that bench over there. Again. What a coincidence, Dunyarzad. We meet again. Uh, why are you sitting here all by yourself? Oh, I ran into some kidnappers just now. But thankfully, Dia came to my rescue. I started to feel unwell after that, so I sat down here. Huh. Kidnappers? Oh my goodness, are you hurt? I'm okay. His arm got scratched, but it isn't serious. Whew. That's a big relief. But, Dunyarzad, you seem a little down today. It's the Subzerus Festival, and you've been looking forward to it so much.
Hi. Why is Paimon not getting the deja vu feeling, dude? Like Excessive physical exertion or strong emotions tend to aggravate my illness. Besides, mm. no matter how amazing today may be, it is but a single day. After however many more days, my time will come to an end. Paimon doesn't quite follow you, and Paimon feels like something's really got you down right now. After many more, however many more days, her time is finally going to come to an end. I wonder if it's her doing it, dude. Repeating the same day so that she never has to worry about dying. Oh, dude, there's so many things that this could be. Uh, I'm so sorry for leaving you behind earlier. It really is fine. I don't mind. I just experienced a number of strange events. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary? Huh? Did something happen? Yes. Hey, Arzad. Have you ever felt deja vu? You know, like when you've already experienced something that's happening right now? Deja vu? No. But my days have been the same for years now. Even if I were feeling deja vu, I suppose I would already be used to it. Hmm. Oh, that's really weird. Okay. Oh, Paimon sees. Then, is it only the two of us? It's almost time. Huh? Time for what? The Subzeros Festival. Nilu's dance. The Dance of is about to begin. Uh, let's go. Okay. Can I really punch the fuck out of the Grand Sage? Please, I beg. I fucking beg, dude. Wait, where am I? Hello? Okay. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding <laughs> workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. Shut the fuck up, pussy. When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. We will publicly announce it later through the Akasha. You're so fucking annoying. Understood. I will inform him when I return. It's so annoying. The Sub Zero's festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. <laughs> You're a baby in an old man's body, pussy. But damn it. Do the dance anyway, Neilu. You should do the fucking dance anyway. Do it. Just do it. Go ham. Neilu, are you okay? Oh. Dunyarzad, the Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. It's okay. There's nothing we can do about it. But you've been really looking forward to this. I don't want you to have any regrets. Oh. It truly is unfortunate, but I don't want to cause trouble for anyone. Didn't the Grand Sage say that he might investigate the organizers? Yes, the wording True, is but... kind of different this time, I think. Well, okay. I'll just have to try again next year. Yeah, there's something weird about this, dude. Because, like, it, it's, I think it is her control. I don't know. Because she, she seems to say slightly different things every time, and everybody else is saying, like, the same things. The next festival. I probably won't be around by then. Exactly. See, Wait, it's different. What did you just say? Uh, no, nothing. I'll be heading back to rest. Thank you for your help, everyone. Paimon can't believe what those heartless geezers did. It's a real shame. For some reason, I felt like this outcome was inevitable. Ah, did Dunyarzad already go back? We should also return and get some sleep. The sub festival was forced to come to an unfortunately abrupt end yet again, dude. So, in the end, you still couldn't figure out what that deja vu feeling was all about? Hmm. Maybe it really was because of exhaustion. I'm feeling pretty groggy. I hadn't thought about it, but my head does feel very heavy. Same here. That's why Paimon stopped thinking about it halfway through the day. <sighs> then, how about we settle in and get a good night's sleep? For now, we can chalk things up to exhaustion. Squirrel? We can do more thinking tomorrow. What the fuck? Observing a modest drop in the output of Nyana energy, but values still remain within normal parameters. Continue to monitor the variances in the data, and find the cause as soon as possible. What? Ah, why does Paimon feel so tired after so much sleep? 
It's it's done it again. Anyway, we should go meet Dunyarzad right away. I just saw the flashing shit again. It went black and white. Fuck. Oh god. Okay. Okay. We got to think about this logically. What the fuck is going on, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit. Okay. Either she is either uh, Ruka Devata or Kusadali and she's doing it. But I don't think she is because she's the one that's saying different shit. Either Kusadali is doing it. Nilo's dance is doing Maybe the dance is performing and we just don't get to see it. We know Nilo could already do weird shit with the atmosphere, like making fucking shit appear out of thin air and stuff with the dance. But I don't really see that being it because we're not actually seeing anything happen unless that's why. I don't know. This is too weird, dude. It's too weird. Good morning, Dinyarzad. Sorry to keep you waiting. Not at all. I arrived early. You sound more and more tired every time. Huh? Hyman thinks you sound kind of tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Shall we go? Let's start with the stalls over there. Great idea. Let's get going. Traveler? Not gonna lie, there's nothing worse I can think of than going to listen to those stalls again. Oh god. Okay, can I just go jump in the fucking ocean for a second, please? I don't want to go to these stalls again. I really fucking don't. <laughs> it's all thanks to Miss Dunyar's Huge. sponsorship that the children can enjoy the Sub Zero's festival. Okay, at least it skipped it. Oh, are you interested in Yalda candies? I have some boxes of candy here. Pick whichever one you want. Hmm. Not much of a choice. All these boxes look the same. <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Oh my flavors god, what flavors? Melon, Hara fruit, Sunsetia. Mm, wow. They all sound pretty tasty. And there's also Lizard Tail and Oni Kabuto. Why do those flavors what? exist? Paima wants to eat the Sunsetia flavor. No problem. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? One. One. Oh, -ho, I like your confidence. No hesitation at all. Oh, congratulations. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. Number five was Oni Kabuto? What the fuck? Number one is Lizard Tail. Number two is Harafruit. Number three is Lavender Bella. Number five is Oni Kabuto. Um, Diamond's not really interested in the other flavors. Oh. Uh, wait. How did you know? Don't tell me that you already knew which flavor was in each box. What? He was right about all of them? That couldn't have been luck. How, how is this possible? I packed all those boxes this morning, and they've been sealed ever since. You couldn't have known beforehand. I'm a genius. Mind reading? X-ray vision? Or some kind of magic trick? This is way too freaky. It is Tell freaky. What's going on? Since when did you get superpowers? Traveler? <gasps> Just now, that was... I'm going to see Nahida, dude! You don't just see her? What's going on? Did you see something? What the fuck? Us leaving Dunyarzad without letting her know is kind of rude, you know. Shut up, Paimon, shut up! I'm going to find... <laughs> Look at her little legs, dude! Look at her little run, it's so cute! Go! Follow the familiar figure. Fucking people, people spread. I just died. She's there again. Keep going. Don't stop. You don't need to catch your breath. Is this a house? No. <gasps> the little bird in a cage. What are you looking for? Why did we come here? Mm. 
What? A familiar figure and an overwhelming Can sense of deja vu. Oh! Over there. What? what? The bird's dead. What the fuck? <gasps> She's here, dude! Hello? Hello? Oh, look at a little smile. That's a cool cape. Holy shit. Hello? Just dot. Oh, dot, dot, dot. Oh. Look! That's... Isn't that Dunyarsan? What? She was still with us just a moment ago. What's happening here? Why are there two Dunyarsans? You already know that this isn't your first sub festival, don't you? A what? <laughs> I'm sure you already know how to use this. A knowledge capsule? Where did you get it? What's inside? You should use it too, Paimon. Uh... You know Paimon? Let's use it together, Paimon. Well, this seems kind of sketchy, but... Paimon feels like... This is what we should do. Bro, my head hurts. What? What the? I want to pause on each and every individual frame there. So many days worth of memories. This is our 20th time at the Sub Zero's festival? Huh? No. The 30th? 40th? Just how many times have we been to the Sub Zero's festival? What the fuck? Have we been trapped in a single day? If it weren't for you, we wouldn't have even realized. Oh, her eyes are what cute. What the heck was inside that knowledge capsule? <laughs> hmm. Your memories are still scrambled? Try your best to remember. This isn't the first time we've met, and I answered that question a long time ago. Huh? <sighs> Let Paimon think. Oh, it's coming back. Meeting you was the real catalyst for restoring our memories, and the knowledge capsule was just your means of showing our minds the way. Uh, what about everyone else? Why are you only helping the two of us? Your sense of deja vu is stronger than everyone else's, yes? As for an explanation, you two received the blessing of Dendro, and you also have special sensitive constitutions. It was as if a single sheet of paper was separating those memories from your consciousness. What? Uh, what's wrong with the Duz, uh, the Dunyazad over there? A familiar question. I think this is the seventh time you asked that. Okay, can you- As you can see, she isn't doing well. You probably sensed it too. The Dunyazad you were just with is different from the first Dunyazad you met. That first in your zod is in front of you right now, and she doesn't have a lot of time left. Oh, man. Uh, what I need to do right now is break out of the cycle? <laughs> Looks like you're almost done sorting out your brain. Oh, yeah. I'm Nahida. Hey, Nahida. Uh, I know. You introduced yourself before. Good. You passed the test. What's happening? You can awaken our memories? And you seem like you know what's going on. Oh, wait. Please don't tell Paimon even you don't know. Everything in this world runs in a loop. Yeah. This cycle is called a samsara. You, me, and everyone else are all stuck inside a one-day samsara. Oh. As for the truth, that's on you to find out. If you were told the truth instead of discovering it yourselves, it would literally blow your minds. I don't know how you'd be after that. What? If you were told the truth instead of discovering it for yourselves, it would literally blow your minds. I don't know how you'd be after that. What the fuck is that all about? I can only give you surface level help, like bits of information and subtle hints. For the rest of the time, 
I'll be doing all I can to slow down Dunyarzad's illness. She looks like she isn't doing well at all. What? The illness gets worse after each sub -Zero's festival. If we can break out of the samsara, I might be able to save her. But as things are right now, she's just a small bird in the sky that's about to lose its last feathers. Oh. All I can do is raise a gale to delay her fall. You sure love to use weird analogies. Oh man. <laughs> analogies are wonderful tools. They let you use existing knowledge to understand unfamiliar things. Okay, uh. so, with what you know so far, what do you think the truth is? Let me collect my thoughts. What the fuck? When you understand the complete you can choose any text entry to interpret it. This interpretation process involves analysis of the text entry and the yield new entries once interpreted to be submitted to the conclusion. Some text entries can be associated with one another once interpreted. So let's associate it. What the fuck? The Grand Sage's speech and the s abnormal mental fe- Wait, the Grand Sage's speech. The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? Hello, Zack! Oh my god, hello! We've already experienced the Subzerus festival many times, and the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. Yep. The moon, illusions, and lies. What do they all mean? You speak for all of these? What's happening right now seems to have happened before. This feeling has been getting stronger and stronger. My mind feels exhausted, even though I haven't done too much thinking. What is going on? Oh my god, dude. Oh god, that's cool. I love it. I love it. This is associate with something else. Uh, we'll associate the festival with the... with the... Mm, with the alchemical results. Hmm. Damn it. With the deja vu? Time loop. That should be it. And the flow of time is endlessly cycling within one single day. Okay. Wait. So we... Wait, we submit? Time loop is the conclusion. A time loop? You've given similarly wrong answers in the past. I don't understand okay. what you want from me. What? Still the wrong answer? Paimon thought that made a lot of sense. It feels like time's just repeating itself. A simple time loop can't explain some of the phenomena. You two are still missing a lot of information. Is that a scripted loss? Unfortunately, loss? I can't give you any more hints. <laughs> That's got to be scripted. Junior is odd. Yeah, okay. The Subzerus <laughs> Festival is happening every day, but that doesn't mean we can waste an infinite amount of them. Hurry and find the truth before today's festival ends. I want to go talk to Neelu. I want to go talk to Neelu. She's the one that does the cool dance and makes shit appear and stuff. We have to escape the samsara of the Subzerus festival. And to do that, we need to figure out what's happening. The truth. Nahida rejected the idea of a time loop, so... We must have missed something, right? Paimon's memories say that we've already done this many times. Oh, but God, dude. Let's go talk to people again. It's more productive than sitting here and scratching our heads. Why don't we start with. No. The stall owners? No, God damn it. Not for the 70th fucking time. I no, please. Oh, God fucking damn it, dude. Oh, okay, okay, I guess. Listen, we're going to chat with the stall owners. Do you sell the moon here? Okay, let's go. Hey there. Hey, it's you guys again. Oh, hello. Where's your cultured friend? She, uh, she's feeling a little unwell. I see. Did you come back to buy something? I guarantee the freshness of my products. I harvested them from the forest just yesterday. Uh, do you ever feel like you're reliving the same day? Huh? What brought this about? I hurried back from the forest yesterday, and I'm selling protos here today. Protos? I haven't felt anything strange. Hmm, um, to put it another way, 
if you really, really think about it, was yesterday truly yesterday? Oh, God. Did you actually come back from the forest yesterday? What kind of philosophical nonsense is this? <laughs> Are you two daydreaming? I wish. Didn't you know that no one dreams in Sumeru? Go somewhere else if you want to find someone to daydream with. <laughs> has a point is this a dream is everyone dreaming no one dreams in sumeru hmm. true it's so weird that people here don't dream why is that the akasha terminals anyway if this all really were just a dream we would have woken up a long time ago hmm. let's keep asking around but i wonder if the akasha terminals are taking people's like dream energy or whatever to like fuel like the Ermintal tree or something with memories. Oh, it's you two. Was my divination so accurate that you felt compelled to compliment me in person? Uh, we actually did run into a situation, but I'm not sure if it's related to your divination. Ooh, I knew it. I told you the God's divination is highly accurate. You just hadn't fully understood its significance yet. What does it? <laughs> what does it mean then? Tell me. You're explain. Really excited about this, huh? That's exactly why we came back. Help us better understand it. Yeah. Uh, help you better understand it? W well, <laughs> that isn't exactly what I excel at. So, Fucking you're admitting it, that you don't have a clue? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Clueless. what kind of situation did you get into? Uh, we're all trapped in the day of the Sub-Zero's festival. You've actually divined our fortune many, many times. Huh? Uh, hold on a second. I thought you guys just lost your wallet or, or fell for a scam. What you just said... Are you serious? Does that kind of thing actually happen in real life? Apparently so, I my friend. you weren't going to believe it. Marvelous. Truly marvelous. I believe you. Recall the interpretation of your divination. The moon, illusions, and lies. It really felt like an omen. Yeah. When you say it like that, the divination does sound like it's related to what's going on. Can you read any more into it? God, this is so I odd, believe dude. that the Archon's revelations are never more than vague hints. Anything more specific is beyond the reach of mere mortals. The book only says, if you trust your instincts and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. So that's how it is. Looks like fortune telling is just fortune telling it's no good for practical problems we have to go and kill that hydro abyss mage to, and overcome the fears we haven't made any progress who else can we talk to uh let's try talking to daya again go, bro go talk to nilu she, well i guess we technically don't know that she does all the crazy shit hmm paima remembers that we tried talking to her a couple of times but she always thinks we're playing pranks on her. <laughs> you think she'll brush us off again? Uh, let's try taking her to see the real Dunyazard. Oh, fuck. Yeah. If we tap into Dia's strong sense of responsibility as a mercenary, then she'll definitely take us seriously. Oh, God. At this time of day, Dia's probably just finished beating up those kidnappers. That... Let's go find her. Bro, that might not go so well. Hey, this girl that you really fucking care about, you want to go see her dying? I feel like that's Monka, you know? Like, not the best thing to do. I'm fine, my lady. It's just a scratch. Perfect timing. Oh, Both God. Of you are here. Paimon, traveler, you came at just the right time. Listen, there was a dangerous get. A uh, gang of kidnappers had just ambushed you. You just defeated a gang of kidnappers. Huh? You saw? Then why didn't you jump in earlier? If someone was protecting Miss Dunyard's eye, I could have went all out. <sighs> anyway, can you do something for me? You want the traveler to take Dunyard's eye somewhere to rest up while you check to see if there's still any kidnappers around. <laughs> did Paimon get that right? How did you know what I was going to say? Magic. We need to say something convincing. Oh, fuck me. Wait, more, more voice, please? People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. Holy shit, dude. We get so Dia much Zack voice. To raise additional funds. And then she was injured because she wasn't used to her new weapon. The moon, illusions, and lies. 
What did they all mean? Okay. My mind feels exhausted, even though I haven't done too much thinking. What is going on? Okay, so we have to interpret two of these together. I wonder if it could be any of them. Wait, no, we have to submit a conclusion. Oh, divination results? That doesn't sound right. It's not going to be the claymore. That makes no s sense. That's not explaining how we knew what she was going to fucking say, Paimon. That's just causing more confusion. Saying more shit that we knew she was going to say. What? That doesn't make sense. You got injured because you weren't using, uh, used to, you, uh, your current greatsword. You sold your greatsword to support the festival. They could have worded that better. I didn't tell anyone about that. Including Miss Dunyarzad. Yeah, that's... You couldn't have known. Exactly. That's not explaining. Now, literally took the words right out of my mouth. What's going on? Magic. All right. So this is the situation. Oh, God, you're explaining everything to Dea. Oh, Jesus. This is going to get so weird, dude. It's kind of hard to believe what you just told me. First, let me make something clear. Okay. Most of us desert dwellers might not be the scholarly type, but we do have basic common sense. Haven't you noticed something off about Dunyazod? She's quieter than usual. Uninterested in anything and <gasps> really gloomy. This one is an illusion. The other one is real. Nilu is making the illusion... To keep the other ones safe. I don't fucking know. That's yeah, my final theory, dude. I don't know. the same as before, but her parents said that this is how she was like at first. Huh? At first? I don't quite understand what you're all talking about. <laughs> I'll go rest on the bench over there. Can I go rest on the bench, please? I would love to at this point. My lady, are you angry? Come with me, I'll show you some evidence. All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt since you knew about my greatsword. Let's make this a quick trip. Miss Dunyarzad isn't completely safe here. You're so fucking cool and hot and... Woof, woof, woof. Oh, God. I'm so damn bad, dude. Okay, uh, I'll bring you to, uh, to Nahida. Okay, Nahida, we're here. Go. That bird again. Is it the same bird or is it a different bird? I thought I told you that it won't help to bring anyone here. Did you? I don't remember we that. just wanted her to see the real Dunyarzad's condition. Mm-hmm. The real Dunyarzad? Uh, where? And who are you talking to? Huh? Oh. Uh, I told you that you two are special. Other people can't see me or Miss Dunyarzad here. Huh. Huh. Hold on. Over there. Is that? You can see her? Wow. How perceptive. Does she have invisible antennae? Nah, you know, what? Miss Dunyarzad, <laughs> she's, she's lying down here, isn't she? <laughs> How's she doing? Her condition's really bad, and she's basically in a coma. How did you know she was here? I can sense her aura. Oh. I, there are also lingering feelings of something like regret or disappointment. Yo, Dea's got weird magic shit, dude. She can what sense happened? feelings of regret you and disappointment? Huh? The sub -Zero's festival has been repeating itself. Bro, what? You begin discussing the issue with Dea, so, who finally understands. You think the sages are behind this? Yeah, they've always been against us. Wouldn't surprise me if they're using the Akasha to intentionally repeat the Subzerus festival as a sick joke. Yeah, that was my first thought, but at the same time, why would they, like, come in at the very end as well? Hmm. You have a point. Aside from the Dendro Archon, the Academia Sages are the only ones in Sumeru who could pull off something like this. Maybe there's more to the Akasha than we know. Mmm... Nahida, can you tell us anything about the Akasha? Right! Didn't you awaken our memories using something that looked like a knowledge capsule? That means you must know something about the Akasha! The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. Holy shit! A Gnosis could do that? No wonder the Akasha is so magical. 
It's being powered by the Gnosis of Sumeru's Archon. <laughs> so, uh, this Nahida you mentioned, what did she say? She said, and Paimon quotes, the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate. God damn it. It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and it grants knowledge to the people. Not gonna lie, she did a good job quoting that word for fucking word. Compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and grants knowledge to the people. Hmm, wait. What's up? I get the grants knowledge part. That's what people have always used the Akasha for. But compiling the entire populace's wisdom? How does that work? Did she mean that the sages enter new knowledge into the Akasha? Doubt it. Most information in the Akasha comes from Erminsol. Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. What do you think? Um... I don't fucking know anymore. I don't know anymore. Okay, if it's this, like, this isn't a conclusion. It's just what we've just been told twice. Is it this? That doesn't I was going right. to say it, dude. Okay, it can't be. My thoughts would be deja vu because that would mean, like, obviously with the Erminsol, if everything has already happened. I don't know. I think it's this. That doesn't sound... I don't fucking know. Just submit everything. Obviously, it's the last one that I go for. I have no clue. You mean the Akasha is causing our mental fatigue? Huh. Now that I think about it, my head's been feeling unusually heavy. Like, okay, I love the system and I think it's great, but I feel like the lead up to it and the question we are asked makes no fucking sense when it comes to the answer, dude. Paimon's like, what do you think, Traveler? About fucking, about the, the time cycle and shit? Like, put the question on like a line at the top so we can actually see what we're trying to answer or something. Because otherwise it just makes no fucking sense. When the desert dwellers set off on their quest for knowledge, a sage once said, knowledge always comes at a price. Mm. Compiling the entire country's knowledge. You think the Akasha pulled a 180 and is extracting information from us? But how would it do that? Who knows? The Akasha can put knowledge into our heads, so who's to say that it can't also poke around in there? We don't know any specifics. What's the point of doing something like that? Just think about Sell it. Sell it? If you could combine the knowledge of every single person in Sumeru, then you can basically turn Sumeru City into a single massive brain. Sumeru's a hive, hive mind. mind. could make breakthroughs and problems that even the smartest geniuses can't crack. An excellent deduction. And the analogy comparing Sumeru City to a massive brain? <sighs> I love it. Oh my god. In that case, we should take off our Akasha terminals right away. Maybe that'll solve this problem. Worth a shot, but somehow I don't think it'll be that simple. Yeah, I was only wearing this for show in the first place. Didn't expect the sages to cook up such a conspiracy. Hmm. Mark my words, when this is over, I'm getting evidence and exposing this whole thing to the public. Good shit, Daya. Also, you notice how th that phrase has been said a lot in the past, like, three weeks, dude. Mark my words, it's been said so much. <laughs> Everyone removes their Akasha terminals. How does everyone feel? Actually, I also noticed something else. Huh? What is it? I feel like at the end of every day, there's always the sound of a beep. Yes. Oh, that! Paimon knows what you're talking about. It's a single soft beep that sounds like it's coming from the Akasha terminal. The sound of a beep. Could it be a prompt tone for when the Akasha is operating? I heard the same sound in Port Almost. That's probably an important clue. We weren't using our terminals, but we heard a beep anyway. Might want to take off uh, hers as well. Oh, shit. What the hell? That was the beep! Traveler, did you hear that? I heard it too. Why is it getting our so dark? Aren't messing with us. There was definitely a beep, but it sounded like it was coming from inside my head. It feels like... Wait, are my eyes dying in real life? It seems like every time it goes into a next seed, it gets darker. We took off our Akasha terminals. Oh, oh, I'm dying. Uh, in game. What the fuck? H help? Phase runtime has exceeded its expected length. At this rate, there may be casualties. But we cannot lose all of our progress. Is that the Grand Sage? Is Datori helping them with this as well? I, I really wouldn't be surprised. Oh, Jesus Christ, flashbanged. Oh, Jesus. Okay, dead. 
smile and wave. Oh no, I'm back. I can't take any more of the stalls, dude. I can't. I can't. Okay. Paimon remembers everything. <laughs> Good. You adapted quickly this time. At the end of last night. We definitely took off our Akashi terminals last night, but we still heard that beep. Why is that? We've been implanted with another form of the terminals. We failed at sev- Yeah, no, we failed at severing our connections. <sighs> but now we can at least confirm one thing. The Akasha definitely has something to do with whatever's trapping us in this cycle. Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Why would the Akasha go this far if all it wants is everybody's wisdom? It's extremely difficult for lab rats in an experiment to understand why they're being treated the way they are. If we're lab rats, then what are you? Nahida, you've never told us anything about yourself. Hmm. I guess I'm the moon. Yes. Moon? Wasn't that the result of our divination? An illusion? Anyway, knowing who I am won't help you get closer to the truth. So you should focus on other things. Don't get distracted and miss any clues. <sighs> okay then. Dia helped us a lot yesterday, so let's go find her. If Paimon's reading the time correctly, those kidnappers should be showing up soon. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, thank God. Okay, it skips. Okay. They, they... Oh, I saw her, dude. I... Was that a waste of greatsword that she just had? <laughs> that was a waste of greatsword, dude. Ah, there you are. I've already taken care of those kidnappers. My lady, did you get hurt? Uh, hold on, something's not right. She's not hurt. Dia? She's not hurt. What's wrong? Why are you both gawking at me like that? Because I love you. you. You didn't get hurt this time. Huh? What do you mean this time? Why are you so surprised that I managed to get out unscathed? What? Those kids were amateurs. Aren't you still getting used to your new greatsword? Your unfamiliarity... Your unfamiliarity... You... Oh. <laughs> Your unfamiliarity usually lands you some scratches. Shh. How did you know about my greatsword? I haven't told anyone about it. Please, don't tell Miss Dunyarzad. So Tia's lost her memories after all. During your battle, did anything feel strange? Anything strange? You already know that I got a new greatsword. Hmm. If I had to say something, it's weird how such a new weapon could feel so... Familiar. True, dude. True. The, the the weapon feeling familiar, and also maybe knowing the enemy movements. That's why she didn't get hurt. It's as if I've already used it to fight a countless number of battles. Thirty-seven and a half. You're saying that although you don't remember using it, your body feels like it does. That's right. Both mercenaries and warriors heavily rely on muscle memory. Only knowing the theory of battle won't get you anywhere. Traveler, what do you think? Uh, could it be because we removed our Akasha terminals? It's never happened before. Yeah. Paimon's feeling really hopeful. Uh, is it possible that we've already broken free? Oh, you're right. Earlier in the Samsara, something like this would have never happened. We, uh, 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 guys, we are literally still repeating the same fucking day. How the hell have we broken th free? Uh, we'll know for sure at the end of the day. We haven't broken free. I have no clue what you two are talking about, but it's still dangerous here, so... I don't think we have. So you want us to take Dunyarzad somewhere else to rest while you check if there are still more kidnappers around, right? How did you know what I was going to say? Can you read minds? Yes. Uh, uh, forget it. Go and do your thing. Oh, Jesus Christ. They're doing the time loop stuff really well with this kind of skipping and shit. Because it was starting to get very, very, very repetitive, but now it's not. Whew. It's finally night time. Aside from Dia not getting injured, everything seems to have stayed the same. Hmm. Hmm. Listen, Nahida. We found out that Dia got out just fine today, even though she got injured every other time she fought the kidnappers. Do you think the Samsara has been broken? Have we saved Dunyarzad? No. Really? Good job on all that progress. Get some good sleep tonight. Gonna need hey, it. What kind of an answer is that? Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. How many todays has it been? 
Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist as anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless sub zeros festival. Okay, okay, no more! Paimon's brain is already shut down. <laughs> That's why it makes no sense to waste your energy thinking about things you will learn tomorrow. Fair, I guess. Get some good rest. You know, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety dookie away. <sighs> what? Did she just tell us to go take a dump and forget forget about our problem? That's fucking incredible. <laughs> Oh, that's so cute, dude. I love her. Uh, She's so cute. Uh, huh? <laughs> what did you just say? Did Paimon hear you correctly? Flush your anxiety huh? dookie away. People always say they feel a sense of relief after they take a duke duke. A duke? That's why I suggested you could try that. Is that so strange? Yeah. Uh, it's so strange and so against common sense that Paimon's at a loss for words. You were sounding kind of smart just a minute ago. Oh, fucking hell, we're gonna go get some rest. Yeah. Even though <laughs> it's happy and lively at the Sub Zero's festival every day, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really gotten to relax. <laughs> uh, let's go back to our room. Oh, God. Uh. Like a bird. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, these sacrifices are trivial. We gotta sacrifice people just to gain knowledge, motherfuckers. Still in the same day. As expected, it's not as simple as you thought. Nahida, you already knew last night that we didn't break out of the Simsara. Why didn't you tell us? <laughs> Would there have been a point? You that spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't come by often. And I thought it might help you clear your minds. Paimon thought that Duke Duke did that! <laughs> uh, whatever. Guess you were looking out for us after all. <laughs> <laughs> of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything to me. Oh. <laughs> Paimon's flattered and everything, but maybe you're taking things a little fast. <laughs> you little dick dick. <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. Oh. That's why you two have been everything to me. Get it? Oh, that's actually so sad. Nahida's talking about confusing stuff again. Paiba, that's not even confusing. She's just being cute, anyway, okay? That's enough chit chat. So, traveler, did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? I kind of want to screenshot this and at, like, all of the theory crafters on Twitter. <laughs> the time loop theory is indeed incorrect. <laughs> huh? Why are you scrapping your previous theory? <laughs> Dea's fighting skills have been improving. Dunyazar's illness has also gotten worse. Oh, yeah! You're right! Gosh, how did we not notice that? We? In a simple time loop, people's physical conditions should also reset. So, what's your new hypothesis? Fuck. What is this? Mercenaries rely heavily on muscle memory, and Dia was able to use her experiences to avoid injury in later samsara cycles. Bro, there's no way that the bodily memories thing goes with the Akasha sound, right? There's no fucking way. I'm going with this one. There's no shot. There's no shot on this God's green earth, dude. Make it make sense, please. What? Memories... If all our memories of a day are erased at the end of that day, then we would unwittingly relive the same day again and again. I can't even see that being right because it's not like you're reliving it in a different way. You're literally reliving it exactly the fucking same every day. The same words, the same tone age, annotations, everything. It, it just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right. <sighs> we aren't in a time loop. Instead, our memories have been erased at the end of each day. Oh! 
just be indicating the deletion of our memories. But then we hear stuff as well. That's why when we wake up, everyone thinks the sub -Zero's festival hasn't happened yet. It's already the next day, but everyone still thinks it's the day before. But muscle memory can't be erased. That's why Dia has been getting better at using her great sword. Uh, and yeah. Everything makes sense. And that might be why hmm. certain things really happen exciting. differently. Interesting. Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong. <laughs> to put it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. That isn't simple at all! Still the wrong conclusion, huh? Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Right! She did help us find her latest clue after all. Let's go! See, I'm loving this quest so far. I am. But the whole, why don't you go do this again, is getting real old, dude. Like I said, I still think the quest is really good. Just doing the, the exact same thing all the time is is feeling weird. But I th like I said, I think they do it in the right way where they zoom it up and there stuff. There you are. Really took me a while to find you. As expected, Dia also didn't get hurt today. Get hurt? Why would I? Don't underestimate me. Well, you're still getting used to your new greatsword. Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just suddenly felt so familiar in my hands and... Uh, wait a second! How did you know I got a new greatsword to begin with? I didn't tell anyone about it. Traveler, could you explain the situation to her today? Paimon got a little sick of doing it. Uh, let's just get straight to the point. Oh, that works! Yeah. Uh, you suddenly become proficient with your great sword because uh, we've lived through this same day many times already, and our memories of the day are erased every night. What happened to you guys while I was gone? <laughs> Did you get brainwashed by some cult? Yes, the Fatus. Well, don't think too hard about it. Just take what we're saying at face value. All right then. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that my body's already gotten used to this great sword, but my brain just doesn't remember it. Yes, your memory's being erased every day. Then I'd have to disagree. That's impossible. Oh? Why is it Why impossible? Is it that? If we've actually been reliving the Subzerus festival day after day, then what happened to the things we used, the money we spent, the food we ate? Common sense says my wallet should have emptied itself a long time ago. There's no way I wouldn't have noticed that. Mm, I thought about that too. Uh, but if the sages were behind this, if they utilized the entire city's resources as well as information supplied by the Akasha... Right! They could use the Akasha to record what everyone did that day, and then use the city's resources to replenish everything! It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. I've got proof. What proof? You have proof? You two are surprisingly serious about this nonsensical discussion. Fine, I'll play along for a little longer. Okay. Miss Dunyarzad, please come along as well. I still can't guarantee that this area is safe. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I can't believe it's Dia who wants to show us something this time. Two days ago, we were the ones taking her to see Dunyarzad. Is that a, that's a training dummy, right? I think. Huh. This is it. Huh? This is a wooden training dummy. What oh, she's gonna say that it, it it doesn't have marks on it, or like the marks don't stack. Mm. See those marks on the dummy? Those are the result of several days worth of practice. Let's say the sages didn't replace it every day. Shouldn't it be hacked to pieces by now? Yeah. That's true, but what if they did? Then the sages would have had to reproduce every mark I left during previous training sessions. I'm a professional fighter. My martial school has always emphasized the importance of refined control. The force, angle, and entry point of each strike is calculated and deliberate. That's why I remember every mark on the dummy as well as my state of mind as I made each strike. It's just as they say, each swordsman has their own unique style. Mm. And even the same swordsman can't make the same cut twice. It would be impossible to copy these marks. Is it really impossible? 
What if they use some fancy machine to carve every single mark? God damn it, Paimon. People often say that a camera's photo can never replace an artist's painting because the former has no spirit to it. The same thing applies here. Hmm. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks from the results of combat training. That makes sense. Seems we'll have to abandon this theory. Whew. Hope that cleared things up for you. Hey, is this that new brain exercise game that's been super popular with the scholars lately? It's surprisingly fun. Anyway, it's getting late. I should escort Miss Dunyarzad to Nilu's stage. See you later. Well, back to square one. Is our memory deletion theory also wrong? <sighs> but at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime. We're not in the real world, we're not in a time loop. Yep, that's true. So, can we think of any new ideas right now? I suddenly realize that something is strange. Strange? Paimon feels like everything's been strange lately. How come we've never thought about leaving the city? Huh? Leaving the city? You're right! It's really strange how we never thought of such a simple solution! Many things should become clear if we can confirm the flow of time outside of the city. Paimon can't believe it. Did we miss this because we're tunnel visioning too hard on our other theories? Or because we're just too tired? It's really strange. We should have thought about this a long time ago. Fuck, we actually should have. How about we go back and ask Nahida? Maybe we've forgotten something about leaving the city. What the hell? That's really cool. That's a, that's a really fucking good point. Can I just... I just, I could just dip out. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, you can't change time? <gasps> ah, you can't currently adjust the time. That's a cool little touch. This this way of doing quests is definitely my preferred way of of Genshin doing quests. Right, the fact that it's like three, four, five hours long, but it doesn't feel rushed and it also doesn't feel too slow. I prefer it. Rather than having like a one hour long Archon quest and wanting more, I feel like at the end of Act 1, I had enough. I was f fulfilled. Wait, try teleport out? Oh shit. Oh, that's fucking cool, dude. <laughs> Tell me more, Nahida. Nahida, we're back! You're back early today. Did you find something new? Sort of. We're mostly sure now that we're not in a time loop. Mm -hmm. And we also aren't in the real world. But at the same time, we have a new question. I think I'm... Am I dreaming? <laughs> what will happen if we try to leave the city? Hmm, leaving the city. As far as I remember, you've mentioned your plans to do that twice before. Uh? We did? But we don't remember anything. What happened after we talked about those plans? What did we say when we got back? <sighs> Let me think. I don't think you ever actually told me what the outcome was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that both times, you never came back the whole night. Oh. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night anyway, so at the time, I didn't think too much about it. It is true that sometimes we lose track of time during our investigations. Before we know it, it'll already be the next day. But still... Neither of us remember anything about leaving town. Really? Yeah, that's really odd. That's kind of strange. In theory, I should have already awakened all your memories. Let's try again tomorrow. Maybe this is the key. Yep. Something here is definitely fishy. Let's get to the bottom of this tomorrow. Beep! <laughs> I fucking knew it. What? We didn't hear a voice this time. Huh? Uh, let's go try to leave the city today. Uh, about that. Well, where should Paimon begin? Uh, Paimon? What do you mean? Traveler, aside from your memories that were just restored, I have another message for you. From who? Listen to it and you'll understand. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. Huh? What? There are countless spaces here. Our subservice festival series is just one of them. There's multiple instances of this shit happening? 
It's my own voice? Yeah, surprised to hear it, isn't it, Ether? We don't usually hear you speak. Traveler, you should be missing two days' worth of memories. Paimon will fill you in. Two days ago. It's time to carry out our plan from yesterday. Let's go and try to leave the city today. Okay, let's go. What is happening, dude? Oh, what the fuck? I bought the meat. Why can't we leave the city? What is the academia up to now? Don't ask me. It's not like I can tell you anything. This is a direct order from the Grand Sage. Just wait until tomorrow. I have a real emergency. My goods have already arrived at Port Ormos. If I don't hurry, they'll be stolen. That's your problem. Make sure you make a request in advance next time. But, but it's not like you can just predict business matters in advance. <laughs> God damn, dude. The it music's like so the good. I already announced the lockdown for Sumeru City today. How completely unsurprising. Let's go and question them. Hello, sir. Why can't we leave the city today? Here we go again. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know either. We just received an order that no one is allowed to enter or exit Sumeru today. They didn't tell us anything else. Of course the Academia wouldn't share their plans with a pawn. So the Academia doesn't trust you at all. <laughs> Angering me won't get you anywhere. If I had that kind of insider info, I would have left this stupid post long ago. Interesting. It looks like he really doesn't know. If we can't get anything out of him, let's take matters into our own hands. Huh? Why don't we climb over the walls? Those guards can't be everywhere at once. This is a good spot, and the guard hasn't noticed us at all. Let's hurry. Pyma, stay here. Huh? Why? Are you going to leave Paimon behind? Leaving the city might trigger disruptions to our memories. We need someone to stay and witness events from this side. But, but what if things get really weird out there and you get into some trouble? And then Paimon won't be able to help you. Paimon, I want you to tell me the last time you actually helped me survive something in combat. Oh, Paimon knows that Paimon can't do much, but we've always been together. Oh. Oh, okay, stop it. I was kidding. God, now you have to make me feel bad, Paimon. You have to talk to me as if you're actually responding to me. You're talking to Ether, right? He's got a voice now, remember? Don't worry, Paimon. If we leave together, it'll just be the same as before. Mm. Okay. Paimon will wait for you. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon as possible. Just a quick look. Okay, I'm going to take a dookie. <laughs> and please, be careful. I'll wipe. An anxiety dookie. Memories. Yes, memories. Let's go try to leave the city today. Oh, fuck me. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong, Paimon? Paimon, that Paimon would never see you again. You just disappeared. Oh, that's Paimon so cute. For you. What did I promise? Paimon, calm down. He's here now. I don't think he understood what you were saying. Uh, Paimon doesn't care. Paimon wanted to go look for you, but you also said that Paimon should stay. Paimon was so worried and so scared the entire day. Although I don't remember doing any of this, still sorry, Paimon. I won't leave you behind. Give you the most important thing is that you didn't actually disappear. Oh, Paimon was so scared that you had gone into another world. Okay. Paimon, oh, dude, that was actually so sad. Of what really happened yesterday. Holy fuck, Paimon. Paimon describes your plan from yesterday. Jesus Christ. Mm, I see. Using two people's different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you disappeared in an instant. Kind of like how fucking Nahida was disappearing to us. Uh, are you sure that's what you saw? You weren't zoning out or anything? Oh, God. No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention. 
What's your perspective, traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? Yeah, I don't even know that yesterday even existed. I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? So they didn't just restrict access to Sumeru City, they're also erasing the memories of those who leave. It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside! So if you leave during this quest, does it reset? Because that's what it makes sense if they delete your memories and shit. Oh my god, no way, dude. Um, if our memories will be erased, how uh, can we leave behind something other than memories? Something like... A message? But how can we send it back? D don't look at me like that. I'm, I'm not used to being stared at. Well... Okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Ooh. Give me some time and take care of Dunyar's ad for me. Fill up a yep. knowledge Whoa, capsule. Happy. Fill up a knowledge capsule. If you can just do that. Wait, if you leave the city, you start the quest with the scratch? Oh my god. Such a cool touch, but no shot in doing it. <laughs> it takes so long. That'd be so upsetting. Can you imagine if you got like three hours ended and accidentally left? Oh, Jesus. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I'm done. Here you go. What? Isn't this just an Akasha terminal? Wait, huh? I made some little changes. Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it can connect to any node. To make something like this? Nahida, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand. Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. Interesting. We'll never know until we try. At least we're taking the initiative now. Yeah, it is worth a try. Let's go then. Let's expose those sages. I still think you should stay. Uh, all right. Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But Paimon still isn't happy about it. See you tomorrow, Paimon. Okay. Oh, she's so cute, dude. Nahida's voice is really cute. It that is. Covers everything that's happened so, far. <sighs> so that message uh, was what I left for myself when I left the city? Yes. Although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. Okay. That was a sudden lightning. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzerus Festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. Huh? That's one heck of an info dump! It sounds like you left the Sumeru city space when you set foot outside of the walls! But everything looked completely normal when Paimon was looking out from the inside! That's unbelievable. And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. Yes. There's another part here. We only received it last night. These spaces have been disappearing one after the other, absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. Bro, what the fuck? Are we getting fucking different timelines and shit? We get the bubble universe? Are we gonna see Honkai in a second? What is going on? Oh, fuck now, me. even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now. Those spaces are actually... 
God damn it! Uh, uh, why did the message end right there? What did the traveler want to say? What are those spaces? Probably because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Well, time to go oh, out again. Right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said, even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? Data things? Oh, God. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly disappearing like that be catastrophic? Yeah. My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. Mm. Oh, so that's what it is! After the sound of the beep, the final space, the Subzeru's festival, also disappears! And we're taken to the next day! Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them. Do lots of new spaces appear every day? Well, that's what he said. Paimon's head is spinning. Just what are these spaces anyhow? Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. Jesus. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, Maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow. The Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. A secret, huh? What? Give me some time. I need to organize my thoughts. Hey! Where are you going? This is so weird, dude. God, this is so fucking strange. Uh, I'll get your thoughts on the bench in Sumeru City. Oh God, the the bench. Okay. Thank you. Do you want some alone time to think? Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right then, Paimon won't disturb you. Okay, thank you, Paimon. <sighs> oh no, don't let time reset because we might be sat on her knee. The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. Jesus Christ. I'm going to go watch it. The Dance of Subsiros. It's that time already. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay, then. I'll see you later. <laughs> the Dance of Subsiros probably gets us out of this cover? thing. Time is ticking away. I think I know the answer now. Awesome! What is it? Paimon wants to know. Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth. There's a reason why the dance isn't happening and why they don't... <gasps> oh! Wait! Maybe that's the reason they don't want the dance to happen because it reveals the illusion. Let me talk to you. You're back. I've been waiting forever for you two. <laughs> Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your Subzerius exam and graduate from the festival? Weird way to put it. Ask away, Miss Nahida. Okay, first off, have you discovered the hidden truth? Oh, fuck me, dude. We are all in a dream. It isn't that the people of Sumeru don't dream. Rather, the Akasha is taking their dreams from them. I fucking called it. People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. Maybe they are stealing it for the Ermin Soul Tree. And those Was I right? With no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when he was trying to describe them. Oh my god. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now. To be fair, I did have like 50,000 different theories, but that was one of them, okay? That was one of the early ones, too. Correct and I think I said it yesterday. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? Fuck. <laughs> one eternity later. It's like all of these, but mainly this. That doesn't sound right. 
all this. That doesn't. What? It's it, it's mainly that the, the, the fact that it's the entire populace, no? That doesn't. So oh, okay. Those dream controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams too. The fuck are you talking about? What? Okay. I honestly feel like the other ones made more sense. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> but is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Hmm. Kuma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions. And the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from greater Lord Ruka Devada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? And they don't intend to stop there. Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the samsara? Oh fuck. Okay. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. We have already experienced the Subzerus festival. Okay. Correct. The Akasha is keeping oh. each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus Festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha, and so it continues. I gotta take the biggest anxiety duke duke, I swear so, to god. This is like a dream factory, and the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay, so that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. Shh, that makes All a lot right, of sense. Last question. Who am I? Are you going to finally reveal it? They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the moon... The moon. <laughs> so you noticed. You are lesser Lord Kusanali. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I put it last. Bro, people guessed it from the second trailer. What do you mean? <laughs> that wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you, is all. <laughs> oh. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. True. It's funny. <laughs> She's about to keep it secret. <laughs> when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Uh, yeah, I, I do have a lot of questions for you, but this doesn't seem like a good time. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. Okay. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. Why can't you simply tell us the truth? You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your mind. <laughs> now that you know this is all a dream... This answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. Oh, Jesus Christ. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. Damn, okay. Uh, how do the sages manage to keep people from noticing this? Firstly, this dream we're in is completely based on reality. People have already experienced this Subzerus festival, 
so it would be very difficult for them to find anything that strikes them as surreal. Secondly, you're probably wondering why people don't have any memories from earlier samsara, right? That's because people don't remember their dreams most of the time anyway. Ah. And in any case, their actual dreams are being taken away from them by the Akasha. True! So whenever they wake up in this dream of the sub festival, they don't remember anything from their previous identical dream. That reminds Paimon. Traveler had a dream when we were in the Avidia Forest, but couldn't see what it was about after waking up. Is that an example of what you mean? Maybe? Yes. Only after receiving the blessing of Dendril can a person gain the Dendril Element's dream-enhancing power. That explains the feelings of deja vu. Meanwhile, everyone else has no idea that they are in the sub Festival Samsara, while their dreams are stolen from them over and over again. Wait, so Dendril amplifies dreaming capabilities. That's fucking interesting. Secondly, we didn't have the Akasha Terminal when we had the original dream about the Ermintal tree, correct? I hope we didn't, but I don't think we did. About the side effects of a mass-produced dream. Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so, when? You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with, like Dunyarzad. Yeah, that's really rough, this dude. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. She's tired because even in the dream. are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've got to put a stop to this! I agree. Why is the dream about the sub Festival? I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? <laughs> Could it really just be a coincidence? It's your special day! Even you don't know the reason? Wow. Now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Traveler, do you have any information? No, like nothing, I don't think. Fuck. Oh, never mind, I do. Definitely a lot of information, actually. Just give me a second. Those spaces remind me of... dreams. Like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. Except these have no sign of human presence. Hmm. Okay. Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation I think it's of this the one. God of Wisdom's mm. power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to no. the people. The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your this heart's one. content. Did he mean something more? Yep. Celebrate the birth of that god? Mm-hmm. What did it mean? I don't have any more questions. Deceiving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the sub Festival Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the oh. man. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? Uh, Nahida's talking in riddles again. That's sad, dude. Oh, fuck, not again. Oh, we're out of time today. <laughs> See you today. I'll tell you how to break free of the samsara tomorrow. See you then. Alright, see you yesterday. See you today. See, see, bye. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Ah, uh, I, 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 see, it's understandable, but also not, right? Because, no. Shouldn't Good be a morning, dick to Nita. her. Uh, uh, wait. Now that Paimon remembers everything, should we instead say, Good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? Is she asleep? <sighs> oh. Are you good? Hey, what's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. Where is Dunya Zaid? She couldn't have... Wait. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunya Zaid already disappear? No way. Are... Are we too late? Oh, she just woke the up. real Dunya Zaid's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. We were so close. I can't believe it. Wait, so what about that other Dunyar's 
Azad. Just what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. Huh? The real Dunyarizad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarizad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarizad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. Oh man. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarizad. Puppets are stiff and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. That's fucking oh god. Oh, that's a that's a weird line, dude. Puppets are stiff and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. I guess you gotta consider what you class as a puppet, right? Scarred be a puppet? Would Albedo? Scarred definitely. Albedo though? I don't know. You know, speaking of which, the old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Oh. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her. So you do remember her after all. Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she still... Still meant a lot to her. You're a kind, Darkon. Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzeris Festival with so many regrets. Oh, Jesus. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. Man. To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? I still think Although Nilu's dance. The Sarah's Festival dream is under the Akasha's control. Only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. Has something that to do means with it. This dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Oh my god, it must be Nilu. Imagination? Nilly. What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you'd naturally assume that food is on it. True. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Yeah, because also Nilu is, I think, the only person that we haven't told that it's a dream that we've spoken to, right? I don't know. So we find the host, then what? Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack! Just pinch everybody. <laughs> and even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. Oh, shit. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. I really hope Nilu is the host, and the way that we get her to realize is by making, like, telling her to do the dance anyway and tell those sages to get fucked. As for me, uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. 
Makes sense. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the traveler went? Yes. Yeah. I want to try something. Go find her. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Go find her. She ain't dead. Hurry and go. Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this, Samsara, need to end. Oh, oh I'm fuck. I'm still a little upset that we've come this far uh -uh. only for dinner, Zod, too. Nah, she's oh, she can bring her back. She can do something, surely. She's such a good person with such a simple wish. But fate was against her. I just feel so demoralized. Yeah. Saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. She's not going to be tepid. But it's fine. We mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. I don't believe it. So let's break the Samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering. Do you think the sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? Unlikely. Knowing the plan, they probably become aware that they were dreaming. An unsuspecting host would be less likely to realize this was a dream. Huh. That's true. Plus, the sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control. Like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Maybe Faris, the Knight of Flowers, the one with the strange getup? Can you imagine? Oh, that would make sense. Wait. Faris, the Knight of Flowers, is a symbol of the wholesome Zeru's festival, right? No. Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? No shot, it's fucking Faris, dude. No. No way. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm nervous now. Because I never suspected that motherfucker. There's no way. I don't believe it. Hey! Wake up. Hmm, you're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? No. Everything's fine. Just, um, it's a little hard to explain. Uh, would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. Oh, God. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you make a wish? Imagine your wish coming true before your very eyes. You want me to make a wish? Is that a new Sub-Zero's festival tradition or something? Less questions, more wishing! Okay. Okay. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. Oh. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So, you have a crush on Dunyarzad? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, is it that obvious? After I, what I just said, I guess it is. I asked me for directions, Viha. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy sub Zerus festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her Knight of Flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years, a hundred years... I'll serve her till the end of time. Oh my god, it really is. Ask me for directions, v -Hall. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. <laughs> Yeah, just a bit. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but... <laughs> that was pretty embarrassing. Uh, you're self-aware. Okay. It's fine. I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. Please come true? I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh. Oh. You're. What? Is she. Fucky? Uh, sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies per person. Back home you go. I thought you said fucky. <laughs> <sighs> uh, nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. 
Yeah, she no. Expected it wouldn't be this easy. It's got to be Nilu. It makes sense to be Nilu as well, especially with the way that this always seems to come to a close with the with the dance at the Grand seems Sage. Like everyone who knows Dunyarza loves her, but none of them has any idea that she. My lady, step back. Oh. That sounds like Dia. Oh right, this is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. I'll teach them a lesson they won't forget. Huh? But Dia can handle them. Hey, traveler! God damn it! It, it won't be Dia. Dia. I actually want to know how it's meant to be pronounced as well. Whether it's supposed to be Dia or Dea. I think it's Dea. It very much looks like it should be read Dea. Dia. I, I can't see it like that, but maybe I'm just wrong. Let me fuck him up. I think oh, it's Dea. It's you. Great timing. Please take take Daniel's out and leave. Leave these guys to me. Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You're wasting your breath. Leave. You. Ugh, fine. All right. Knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's oh not shit. Like I don't trust your fighting skills. We're getting mad, dude. What the fuck? Anyway, watch yourself. Okay. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. You're going down. That zoom in made me go dizzy. <laughs> really? Dude, that death animation is so sick. It's so cool, dude. Let's light it up. It's so cool. Maybe they were the source of the dream. Were you just taking your anger out on those guys? I'm fine. I'm just angry at myself. <sighs> you and Nahida both. Dunyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Damn. Oh, and speaking of her, Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub-Zero's festival, before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. I've forgotten all about that. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Sub-Zero's festival. Uh, should we check out what the item is? Maybe it'll give us some clues. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. She got a point. She do got a good point. Look at that mass. Is that a vase? This is the place. It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Yes. Hey, the windows are unlocked. Okay. Uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. <laughs> You're trespassing. Paimon enters the room and returns a while later carrying something. Temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Oh shit, an elegantly written note. Wow. <clears throat> Dunyarzad wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the Subzeru's festival and had all her health problems to worry about. She must have wanted to give this to us as a oh, gift man. on the day of the sub -Zero's festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her. Dunya Zod. I, I, I think we can. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think she's dead dead. Hey, where are you off to now? I really hope not. Uh... Talk to... What the fuck? Is she at the bench? She is there. What the hell? The music's so pretty. It's Dunyarzad's puppet. The fake Dunyarzad, I guess. I'll feel better if I say this out loud. Thank you. Traveler? You give the Traveler so many voice options, and then the one time he says, I'll feel better if I say this out loud, you don't allow him to say it out loud? 
You must be exhausted. I will never understand the direction with his voice, dude. I never will. I Come don't understand. We've been stuck in this place for a really, really long time. Heck, even the last time we were chatting happily with Denyarzad feels like an eternity ago. Hmm. Goddamn. Is this all the different spaces? Paimon still remembers when we were sitting here, and the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Nilu's dance of Subzeru's. I can barely recall it now. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. Huh? what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean... Dunyarzad? Yes, Traveler. What is it? Oh. So she's still just a puppet. But just now, how come... Not leave behind any regrets. Let's go, Paimon. Are we gonna... She wants to see the dance. What? That was the one regret that she had here, dude. She just wanted to see the fucking dance. To watch the dance of Subsirus. Ah, oh, shit, dude. I really want to punch the Grand Sage in his stupid little fucking face, though. Can I do that still? If you continue to resist, shut we the will fuck have up. to order an investigation into every single event organizer. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. I'll exercise my fist oh. on his face. How did things turn out like this? Fuck, did. Nilo, you're dreaming. Wake up. I think it's you. It has to be. Uh, traveler? Uh, you don't have to get involved. He's a sage from the academia. I don't want to drag you into this. Traveler. Do it. Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the academia, that's another day gone to waste. Is it him? Is he dream? Is he the dream? <laughs> Wait. <gasps> they're not reacting. Have they been scared stiff? Wait. They're fucking puppets? Oh, of course. If this is the sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this. So they're just substitutes. Well, fucking kill him then. Punch him really hard. What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? Hold on a moment. What's up with those flowers? Nilu, it is her. Like I said, they symbolize the goddess of flowers. It's just a shame that all the real Bodhisaras went extinct after her death. Yes, the greater lord brought forth new Bodhisaras in memory of the goddess of flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. Beautiful shade of purple. Aren't these flowers real Padisaras? Just like the ones from the legend? I didn't even notice. Tanyarzad, did you find these? But didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away? So, Al? Yeah. What's going on here? Nilu, close your eyes. Uh, uh huh? Imagine that the Grand Sage and his entourage are not here in front of you. Wait, didn't they disappear though still? Okay. You guys are acting weird. But okay, I'll try. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. Hey! They disappeared! So Nilu's the host! What a surprise! 
it all makes so much sense now. Purple body Saras don't exist in the real world anymore. But in Nilu's subconscious, they can appear as decorations on the stage. Yeah. It's just like the example Nahida told us. People assumed there will be food on a plate, and Nilu assumed there would be real potty Saras in the flower pots. So when you saw the flowers, you instantly knew it was Nilu? Correct. But if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're dreaming. How should we make Nilu realize that? Am I dreaming? <laughs> She's <Huh>? smart. <laughs> <laughs> She's got brain cells. How'd you come to that conclusion? <laughs> so I'm right. <laughs> Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? Oh, fuck it out. That was good, dude. <laughs> yes, but you aren't completely wrong either. The point is, what made you think this is a dream? I'm getting real, um, actually vibes from Paimon right now, dude. <laughs> as far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the first sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Oh. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dunyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. So it was about the first sage, huh? Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. Oh? Uh, please His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the First Sage, as if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be worried. This is sounding suspiciously like Aether as well, mastering all the elements and shit. The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife lying next to him said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. Jesus. In the end... The first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City and founded the Academia. <sighs> what a happy ending. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He never went on his journey? What? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon, so she blessed him in the form of a dream. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. Oh, God. It's a really interesting connection. But we really gotta wake up soon. <laughs> like the sage in the story. Now that Nilu's aware of it, this dream shall be over soon. Can you do the dance first, though? I see. Well, it just so happens that today's sub Zero's festival is almost over, too. We need to not let her have any regrets. She wants to see the dance. Come on. Come on! Since we're in a dream, yes! let's make this final dance of sub Zeru's as beautiful as we can. Uh, I've been waiting a long time for this. Please dance your heart out. Yes. <laughs> the wait is over, everyone. I dedicate this to our god, the dance of sub -Zerus. Oh shit! What? <laughs> huh? We're getting jazzy? So this is the dream dismantling? <sighs> I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilo's dance. 
Show us Kusanali with her. Did die? Oh, I I actually didn't think she would was dead. I thought she was she'd find a way to bring her back. Another fucking Tepe situation, dude. There's no way. Oh. Good morning, traveler. Oh, my mom feels like she's been asleep for the longest time. Good morning, Paimon. My head hurts. We didn't hear the beep. My head feels super heavy. Did we oversleep? Do you even remember going to sleep last night? No, I also don't remember a beep. Paimon thinks it was after the Sub Zero's festival. The Sub Zero's festival! <laughs> Did we finally escape from the Sub Zero Samsara? I remember now! <laughs> Quick! Take off your Akashi terminal! At uh, the end of the dance of Sub Zero's, I think I saw. Uh, quick, let's go see Dunyazod! She's not gonna be there, dude. She. She literally showed up in, like, fucking dream form, ghost form. Let's go to the usual spot. Huh? What usual spot? Ha! Huh. <gasps> Catherine? What the fuck? Well done, Traveler and Paimon. And thank you, Dunyarzad, for organizing the sub Festival for me. Hold the fuck up. Wait, what? I'm sorry, who are... I'm. It is Kath is. Nah, you do. The Catherine? Dunyazad. Oh, a traveler, Paimon. I have something amazing to tell you. What? I just had a dream. And I saw Nilu performing the dance of Subzerus. Was it a dream? I was there too. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Fucking explain right now. Catherine was acting weird when we met at the sub festival. And... Dunyarzad, did you save her? It's a really long story. We shouldn't disturb her. Her consciousness is still weakened. Let's chat somewhere else. Hmm... How about by the Traveler's favorite bench? Uh... Bro... Whoa. No, no, let- It's such a relief that she's all right. Mm -hmm. After we parted on the last day of the sub Festival, I left the city and saw what the Traveler had described. This isn't right! Among the countless dreams, I found one that was growing fainter and fainter. This proved my suspicion. Once Dunyarzad could no longer bear the Akasha harvesting her dreams, her consciousness began to dissipate. But this also meant it escaped the Akasha's control. Such a small fragment of consciousness can't last for very long, though. It will return to its original dream, where both will gradually fade until they completely disappear. Okay. I used all the power I had to keep her dying dream alive as long as possible, but it still wouldn't have lasted for much longer if it hadn't been for you two breaking the samsara. You're welcome. So it looks like we did manage to save Dunyarzad in the end. And not a moment too soon. Very happy ending. It's truly a miracle. Huh? Why are you two smiling so happily? I thought you'd be so moved that you'd start crying. 
I need to spend more time observing human emotions. If you've been observing Catherine, that's the wrong person to observe. She's a robot. Now hit a that's robot. Fine. Everyone reacts differently. All right. You two must have a lot of other questions for me, right? After all, you saved my faithful believer. As your reward, I will answer any and all questions. Why do you look like Catherine? To be accurate, I'm using the Akasha as a medium to occupy Catherine's consciousness. Uh, how did you do that? Poor Catherine. Uh, does this mean you can also occupy other people's consciousnesses? No, because Catherine's not a person. She's a robot. Theoretically, I can enter anyone's mind as long as they're wearing their Akasha terminal. The Akasha is the legacy of Greater Lord Ruga Devata. As Lesser Lord Kusanali and the first Akasha terminal, my consciousness has always been linked to the Akasha. I've always respected my people's free will, so I've never actually occupied their consciousness. When necessary, I just borrow this bionic Snezhnayan puppet. Uh, uh, hold on. Confirmed! Did you learn some deep, dark secret? So Catherine is... No. It's confirmed! <laughs> I felt something was off about her. <laughs> what about your own body? Why do you need to borrow other people? Don't you live in the sanctuary of Suristana? That story begins a long time ago. After Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared, the sages found my newly born self and took me back to Sumeru. Did Sandrone create the Catherines? At that time, I was young and weak. The sages kept me in the sanctuary of Suristana, ostensibly for the sake of protecting me. But I've hardly heard from them since. However, I do understand that they had hoped to find Greater Lord Ruka Devata instead of me, a symbol of her passing. So, the sages basically put their new Archon under house arrest? How dare they! Why don't you teach them a lesson, Nahida? Why would Sandrone create Catherine's to help the Adventurers' Guilds, knowing that it's going to help the Traveler eventually get to them? Unless that's exactly what they want! In some ways, they aren't wrong. Greater Lord Ruka Devata was omniscient and omnipotent. Even after her death, the Akasha is still empowering this nation. And I... I'm still really far away from being able to call myself the God of Wisdom. Moreover, the Academia is also more proficient at governing this country. Existence has little meaning. Listen, Dahida, this is all very, very sad, but you, I mean, listen, we've just learned so fucking much crazy, wacky, wild, inflatable alarm, wailing tube man, wacky shit, dude, that I can't feel sad right now. I'm confused still. You're an excellent Archon. You're fucking great. You know, 10 out of 10. Yeah, you got a lot of believers. Just look at the Sub Zero's festival. Everyone who showed up truly loves you. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. <laughs> She's so cute. I honestly don't need physical freedom as long as I can connect my consciousness to the Akasha. What if that's not even Lesser Lord Kusanali's real body then? What if she's just occupying Nahida's body and that's like another puppet of some kind? Trying to find a way to save Ermin's soul is my life's mission and top priority. I will work on that and try to live up to being a deity in the meantime. Every once in a while, I will also take up the duties of the God of Wisdom and enlighten a lost soul here and there. Doing all that should be enough. There's so many questions here, I don't know where to fucking begin. Uh, about what I saw in that dream at the Avidia Forest. At the Avidia Forest, there was this incense that made the Traveler fall unconscious and dream of a huge tree in a red sky. You also heard someone's voice, right? It said world. And forget me. Yes. Please tell me that's Ruka yeah. Devata. So you do know. We've been wanting to ask you what that was about. And if the red sky was related to Conria. Please. Hmm. It seems like the traveler established a connection to Ermensoul. That was a message left by Greater Lord Ruka Devata's residual consciousness in Ermensoul. Yep. Perhaps her last memory before she died. It's fucking cold it did. you two probably know. Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared after the disaster in Conria. 
The timings of these events do line up, so your suspicions are reasonable. A message from Greater Lord Ruka Devata? We thought it was from the Scarlet King! So maybe the part that we see in the trailer where the gems on the Traveler's outfit, like the chest marking, the earring, and the wristlets, or whatever they're called, um, when they're white, which means we have our original power, maybe it's because the Denjo Archon <clears throat> is making us dream about uh, when we were in the past in Camria, maybe to see what happened to uh, Greater Lord Ruka Devata. The Scarlet King? That god who died even longer ago? Uh, some present-day desert dwellers still worship him. You probably just heard some of their conspiracies. Clip it. Clip it and ship okay, it. Okay, so what does the message mean? I want to see the unknown god. I still haven't managed to decipher it. Even the Akasha isn't currently capable of doing that. Greater Lord Ruka Devata's residual consciousness in Ermansoul seems to be contaminated with something that has a very dangerous aura to it. Many devoted scholars go mad as soon as they connect their consciousness. I've mm. warned the academia about this many times, but people still keep falling victim to it. But I believe this is the key to saving Ermansoul. That's why I've kept trying to decipher it. So, to save Erminsul, maybe they'll have to wipe the data of Greater Lord Ruka Devata so that the world literally forgets her. So the tree in the vision was Erminsul? Oh, Tainari also said that Erminsul is sick! Is it because of the contaminated consciousness? Mm. But even if you can't figure out what that vision was all about... Because if that's what they feed into the tree... Like the search for you was all in vain. We either need to get rid of the... We're gonna burn the fucking tree. The Traveler wasn't affected after coming in contact with that consciousness. I've never seen anyone like that. With you here, we may have a chance at deciphering it. No, we must decipher its secrets. I've already eliminated all other factors that might affect Ermansoul. This is the only one left. Yeah, we bought it. We bought to do some this weird shit, dude. Life and death at stake. It could determine Ermansoul's fate. As well as to that. Oh god, okay. Uh, about the sage's plan. There's never been any big problems with the Academia's governance of Sumeru. This is the first time I've seen them step out of line. I wonder what caused them to go down this path, and what they hope to achieve. Even though the city's residents haven't noticed anything strange, if the Traveler hadn't broken the Subzeru Samsara, the situation could have become dire. I tried to do some investigating in the Akasha, but I couldn't find anything suspicious. And all the people of interest seem to purposely avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. I think they're deliberately trying to hide something. Oh, that reminds Paimon. In Gundarvaville, there was a sage who had invited Tainari to join some yes. kind of project. 100%. Could it be related? Regardless, I need to first uh. investigate the sage's motives, make things right, and punish them if needed. <sighs> but I'll have to be discreet, or they'll see me coming. Shit, dude, I fucking really do not like how Kole was experimented on by the Doctor, Datori, and fucking... Mm, oh, God, dude. I'm getting major flags. I'm getting major fucking flags. Uh, no one has realized the issue with the Akasha. You mean how the Akasha stops you from having dreams? Yes. Yeah, it's been such a long time. No one's noticed something's up? It's not that no one noticed. It's more like no one cared. Ultimately, it's all rooted in the sage's misdirection. Datori has no redeemable factors. Hey, I think chat will disagree. Hey, chat, type what if Datori is hot too if he's... <laughs> misdirection? The sages convince <laughs> everyone to believe that being unable to dream is a sign of rationality and wisdom. Not dreaming is a badge of honor in Sumeru. Even if the truth is that their dreams are being reaped by the Akasha. With their propaganda in place, the sages can maximize their use of the Akasha to facilitate their research. Mm. Besides, Greater Lord Ruka Devata must have created the Akasha in the hopes that it could be used to its full potential. That's why I've never come out strongly against this. Damn, dude. 
Anyway, the perspective advocated by the sages drowned out any voices of doubt. By now, even those who never use Akasha terminals find it too shameful and embarrassing to talk about their dreams. I don't have any other questions. Got it. I hope my answers were satisfactory, seekers of knowledge. <sighs> to be honest, maintaining Dunyarzad's fading dream took a lot of mental energy. I think I may need to rest for a while. So I'm just going to put this out there. Everybody was saying Venti was like getting weak as an Archon. I don't see it, dude. Not when we see something like this. Like, Nahida is actually weak. It seems like she is actually weak. Oh, and you don't need to worry too much about the Sage's activities for now. The Akasha won't be able to conduct another project on the scale of the Subzeru Samsara in the immediate future. Go and get some sleep. Leave everything to us. <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> this is truly the most exhausting birthday I've ever had. Aww. Hmm? Traveler? Paimon? Why am I here? Poof. Do either of you know? <laughs> You're a Shashdayan spy! Uh, maybe you were sleepwalking. You know you can't wake up a sleepwalker. We, uh... We happened to walk by, so we thought we'd wait for you to wake up. Error rebooting. Let's see. Huh. I should visit my maintenance personnel sometime. What the fuck? Catherine, you oh, fucking... Oh, I'm fine. I better go. Thank you. We're just gonna act like it's been common knowledge for years. We're just gonna act like it's been common knowledge, dude. There's no fucking way. That's so weird. Oh, YouTube, thank you for watching the act two of the Arco Quest. Holy shit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rest my fucking brain in a second. Holy shit, dude.